Tell this guy to move the car. What's the description? Stop shooting! Stop shooting! Hi everyone, Donut here. I hope everyone had an amazing Thanksgiving where Uncle Jerry didn't drink so much he said the N-word then shot himself in front of everyone. For my Thanksgiving, I went over to Jared Taylor's house with Heather and John and we had a little Friendsgiving for all the friends that didn't go home to their families. Caleb Francis made a beautiful Thanksgiving turkey with stuffing. I made some green beans and deviled eggs. Heather made her famous homemade from scratch macaroni and cheese. That's what good pussy sounds like. <laughs> it was an all-around good time with no accidents taking place. Speaking of accidents, have you been wrongfully injured and believe that you deserve compensation for that injury? The sponsor for this video is Morgan and Morgan. Our sponsor for this video is unlike any sponsor that I've had before. It's a law firm that can make you a bunch of money if you've been wrongfully injured. Morgan and Morgan is America's largest injury law firm with over 900 attorneys operating in 49 states. They are not a traditional law firm. They are a consumer facing brand with a promise of being for the people that means you let's say you're driving down the interstate and some big <laughs> 18 wheeler just runs you off the road and you're like ah <laughs> my neck but you don't want to deal with hours of bull <laughs> meetings paperwork talking to people who wants to talk to people that's where morgan morgan comes in with submitting an injury claim you can submit a claim online have it reviewed by an attorney and you don't even have to leave your house you can sign documents upload pictures share medical records and doctor bills all from your phone you can even text message your attorney and case manager without Without having to go into an office. Over 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan with handling their accidents. If you ever think an attorney can help you out with something like this, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in 8 clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. To get started, go to ForThePeople.com or dial Pound Law, L-A-W, that's Pound 529 from your cell phone. If you are ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash donut operator that is for the people.com slash donut operator or click the link in the description or the pinned comment below now let's do shootings involving the dumbest bystander i have ever seen in my life november 10th 2022 brooklyn new york yes this did happen november of last year and you may have seen some of the security footage of this incident but the nypd just now released the body camera footage. This is why sometimes you'll see me do older shootings because all of the footage isn't released yet. I like to wait for the body cam or the dash cam and all that stuff to come out so I can combine them all and you guys get a better story. This is exactly why I'm not doing the video yet of the aspiring actor that got smoked by California Highway Patrol on the interstate in Shitville, Poo Piss, California. From what reports say, that aspiring actor started fighting with police and then he tased the officer, which resulted in an officer-involved shooting. You probably shouldn't tase cops if you don't want to be shot. The point of the story is, I am going to do that breakdown as soon as more footage comes out. I really want to see the events that led up to the shooting. Anyways, the body camera footage of today's incident we're going to be breaking down just came out, so that's why I'm choosing to do it now, and I didn't do it last November. Okay, so one, one second though. Let me just go off the rails a little bit while we're talking about Los Angeles. I really think that you should hear this story first. A story that I found while I was researching that California Highway Patrol incident we were just looking at. Before we go any further, if you want to watch just the raw shooting of the incident that we're breaking down today, you can go on over to Donuts Raw Police Footage. Otherwise, stick around. You're going to like this story. I'm sitting here watching this guy get shot six times on the ground and trying to figure out why he's dead now when out of the corner of my eye, I spot the word sex. Don't fucking judge me. So of course I investigate further and the title that's kind of cut off says, local Taco Bell holiday party included open sex. But wait, there's more. If you're sitting there telling me you wouldn't click on that title, you're a goddamn liar. Yeah, yeah, I know that you came here to watch a man get shot to death by the NYPD. Bear with me a moment. This shit is hilarious. This story may not have anything to do with criminal law per se, you know, crime, like what we do on this channel, but the main character is suing Taco Bell. So there's civil law involved. Law. We do law here. Laws and things. According to court documents, here's a little story that unfolded that's leading to a lawsuit in Los Angeles. So last week, a woman who used to work for Taco Bell opens up a lawsuit against Taco Bell. She's wanting to get paid for damages. Damages to her wallet and her eyeballs. She just opened the lawsuit last week, but what had happened on December 2018 at the San Pedro Taco Bell, employees had held a potluck Christmas party and our plaintiff brought a guacamole bowl. 
a potluck being, you know, where everyone brings one dish and then you all share dishes and you have a great time at the Taco Bell. Maybe there's an orgy or two. On arrival, she noticed the supervisor had taped up all the windows and cameras inside of the restaurant with wrapping paper. Kind of odd, but according to reports, there were free drinks and so she decided to stay around even though some of the people there were overserved free drinks, according to court documents. So around midnight, the plaintiff stepped outside for a smoke. When she stepped back into the restaurant, one of her co-workers was banging his wife in front of everyone while making out with two other co-workers. Damn, dude, Taco Bell goes hard. So our main character, the lady, the plaintiff who's suing Taco Bell is disgusted, cum and sour cream all over the place. I said no sour cream. Okay, I paraphrased that last part a little bit, but you know there was. It's in that cheesy gordita crunch you're eating right now. So she she storms out of the restaurant, but damn it, she forgot her guacamole bowl. This is literally in court documents. She goes back inside and what does she see now? No, it's not her co-worker still Baja blasting out someone's back. The participants in the orgy that was just happening inside of the Taco Bell are now vomiting everywhere. <laughs> Reports state that they were throwing up in the trash and one person was even throwing up in her guacamole bowl. What a dick. Shocked and disgusted and outraged, she went back in to retrieve her guacamole bowl only to find that her manager and the other co-worker involved in the sexual encounter were vomiting. One threw up in the trash while the other vomited in her guacamole bowl. See, I wasn't lying. <laughs> what I'm thinking happened was they f***ed up and used their own supply. They ate Taco Bell. So she reported him like the dirty snitch wet towel that she is. They got fired and then one of them threw a brick through her car windshield. Taco Bell for some reason did not respond to media inquiries about the incident. Okay, I'll, I'll do the shooting, but tell me you didn't need that story in your life. November 10th, 2022, Brooklyn, New York. At around 10 p.m., a 42-year-old man was involved in a dispute in an apartment where he discharged a pistol, striking no one. Angry at his doo-doo marksmanship, he left the apartment and started walking down the street with his gun still in his hand. A couple of blocks down the street, he spots two bystanders hanging out. He fires a shot at them, striking nothing. Still highly upset with how shitty he shoots, he continues to walk down the road. Several people see him being an active shooter, and so they call 911. Uh, police on, uh, uh, on uh, 36 between uh, Neptune and Mermaid, there's a guy in a white shirt. He's walking down the street with a gun. I see a cop, one cop uh, uh, pulling up, and, but they're not even getting out of the car. Now they're getting out of the car. They, it's going down out there. Um, Do they have him or are they shooting at him? What's cop talk to me, sir? I think they're uh, pointing, they just pulled out their guns at him. Looks like we have an active shooter on our hands. A very dangy call to respond to for officers. This is wild. How can this man have a pistol in the city, even the state of New York, with all these gun-free zone signs everywhere. I don't know if you knew this, but a pistol license in New York is very expensive and hard to obtain. I'm not talking about a concealed carry permit. I'm talking about just to have a pistol, even in your home, in the state of New York, especially New York City, you have to ask the government if you can do that. That's one reason I'll never live in that shithole. Sorry, Casey Neistat, I love you. Immediately after the call, police officers arrive on scene to the intersection where the man is now standing with the gun still in his hand. Now let's talk about the dumbest bystander to ever exist in the history of bystanders. This genius walks out of a store onto the sidewalk, sees a man with a gun standing in the middle of the street looking at her, and instead of fleeing or running back into the store, she starts waving her arms at police and motioning at the guy. The suspect, seeing her waving at someone, turns around and starts firing shots at police. The officers who rolled up in the middle of the intersection and slammed on their brakes get out and start shooting at the guy. One officer fires 12 shots while the other fires 8 shots. The guy goes down, but in this next part you'll see that he is not entirely out of the fight. This is why you shoot someone until the threat is completely eliminated. Shoot them until they stop moving. That's why cops shoot people so many times sometimes and people get upset. It turns out that human bodies are pretty damn durable if not shot in the right spot. Real quick, back to the bystander. <laughs> they had the brilliant idea to stand behind the guy who has a gun with police rolling up in in that that line, that sight right there. Oh, and don't try to tell me, well, she didn't know. Bullshit. She was pointing at the guy's gun while police were stepping out of the car and pointing their guns at the guy. She saw that she was in the line of fire and still decided, do, 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 I'm gonna stand here. Anyways, old dude rolls over and continues to fire at police. He's laying down on the ground and he's got a little bit of cover behind that car, so that's gonna make it harder for the police in front of him to shoot him. But the suspect was not expecting the third officer. That officer does a pro gamer move and flanks him from the right side, shooting the suspect point blank 10 times.
let's go ahead and watch some body camera footage. I'm not sure if you guys remember the number one rule in all police shootings. There's always a screaming woman present. First up, let's watch the officer who is driving the police SUV that pulls up first. Shots fired! 36 Neptune! Stop off and shoot! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Cease fire! Cease fire! Solid tactics bailed from the vehicle, found the nearest cover, which was behind his patrol car, did flag the shit out of his partner, but no one's perfect in a gunfight. Now let's watch the body camera footage from his partner in the passenger seat. Last but not least, the Mega Chad who does the pro gamer move, Officer Tatar. Alright, move the move, tell this guy to move the car. What's the description? Oh, come on. TJ, get in the car. Get in the car. Where? What's he wearing? TJ, TJ, get in the car. Get in the car. Where is he at? In the end, the suspect ended up living. I'm just kidding. He did a fucky wucky and got put in the forever box. No officers were hurt in the exchange of gunfire because even in the end, the suspect still sucked at everything in life. The screaming female bullet magnet bystander still continues to waddle through life with the brain of a toddler whose soft spot was pushed on too hard during birth. That's all I have for you fine people today. If you want to help support the channel, you can watch the unsubscribe podcast. You can go on over to donutoperator.com, get some super sweet merch. Follow me everywhere, including Twitter, where I now have a yellow check mark pretty rad stuff and until next time please have a fantastic day Whack.